Well, good morning, everyone, on this May 24th, the seventh Sunday of Easter, and also Ascension Sunday. And on this special day, we uh, have a guest preacher, our friend, uh, Ken Gray Physic, to be uh, giving the message this morning. And a special welcome to St. James and Feminine Falls, Christ Church, Cobacom, and St. Francis in the Valley, Green Valley, Arizona. I hope you have time to print off your leaflet. We have the hymns and the prayers and everything that you'll need in here. Um, I will also, for those who have hymn books and prayer books, I'll let you know where we are if you're following along that way. We're going to begin this morning's celebration with hymn number 374 in the Canadian hymnal, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 374. Amen. 
Alleluia, the Son of Righteousness has risen. O oh, come, let us worship. Please join me in the singing of the Benite.
the reading from Ephesians 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith from in the Lord Jesus and your love towards the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us? Who believe according to the working of his great power? God put his power to work in Christ in heaven. God has put his power to work in Christ when he was raised from the dead and seated from the right hand in the heavenly places for above all to rule, and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in the age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us now. Thanks be to God. We now continue with the hymn, Jesus' Name of the Ball. Now. 
Thanks Thanks be so. to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The ascension of Jesus' story holds various images for each one of us. Luke's Gospel says, as he blessed them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. Some earlier manuscripts of Scripture do not even have those last few words. In Acts, his other book, Luke writes, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. Such images take this child of the space age back to my school days, watching Alan Shepard and John Glenn lift off from the earth. Godspeed, John Glenn, are words I can still hear in my mind. Some of us will recall President Kennedy's words that America would put a man on the moon within the decade. He spoke his words on May 25th, 1961. That would be 59 years ago tomorrow. And of course, on July 20th, 1969, two men walked on the moon. Others would follow. We have had space shuttles and disasters, space stations and wonderful pictures and then stories of 16 sunrises and 16 sunsets each day as that station goes around the world, Earth. As I stood on my cottage dock one recent night, I was in one of those reflective moods, moods of course, as I looked up at the starlit sky and reflected on life and, and so much that has happened. It has been a week of my 44th anniversary of ordination as a priest in the Church of God, the 45th of my ordination as a deacon. I have thoughts of various churches in which I ministered. I thought of loved ones who have died, of space flight too, and wondered what others down through time thought as they looked up into the heavens at those stars and at the same moon. Now, we as people of Christ gather in this particular time. Remember, Christ also stared up into that sky at those stars and the moon, as so many did. And we hear about an event that is filled with imagery, as I pointed out at the beginning. But they are images that spoke to the mind of the person listening. You see, the Jewish people knew the stories, knew the many images spoken about, of their ancestors fleeing Egypt, led by a pillar of cloud. They knew the prophet Daniel, dream, dreaming of a man more than human, coming on the clouds of heaven. And their poetic songs hold images, some of which course are about clouds and the heavens. Imagery pointing to a mystery, to the divine. There is no need for a text such as Jerusalem we have lift off. For me it is more akin to the burning bush of Moses, about holy ground, those thin places the Irish speak about. Places where heaven and earth seem to meet. And one indeed stands on a very special place indeed. If only for a moment in time. A Canadian Anglican priest and poetic writer, Herbert O'Driscoll, notes the ascension is not a theme that, quote, can be explained and analyzed and in that sense understood. That is a 21st century longing to understand, to analyze, to explain, end of quote. For him, the simplicity of Luke's gospel words 
he withdrew from them are enough. And over these years, they have been enough for me as well. If I take the passages too literally, my space age mind sees a liftoff that brings about a state of disbelief. But when I delve into the poetry of language and story, ah, that can help me in the quest to try to explain, to analyze, to understand within about life and about faith. Paul uses imagery, of course, as he speaks about Jesus seated at the right hand of God. Creeds of our church use such imagery too, even though few believe any longer in a three-tiered universe of heaven and earth and hell. Poetic words and imagery come to us in so many ways, of course, in so many other stories. Some by World War II pilot John McGee have been posted for Captain Jen Casey, the snowbird pilot who died in a crash a week ago. McGee's words were quoted in part by President Reagan after the Challenger space shuttle blew up all those years ago. I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced and with silent lifting mind, I've trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand, and touched the face of God. The words speak to me not only of high flight, the name of McGee's poem, even about space itself, but also can speak to me and to others to help souls soar when staring up at the stars and contemplating life and this wonderful faith of ours. It seems to me that is so much of what scripture is about, including today's story of the ascension. Imagery and poetry of clouds and wind and stars in the heavens of standing on holy ground, on thin places, of putting out our hands and touching the face of God, and God in Christ touching our faces and our souls. Jesus withdrew, Luke notes, but he never left us. The risen and ascended Christ Jesus, now out of time and place as we know them, can be with us in whatever time of need, in whatever place we find ourselves. May our souls soar, and may we hear that whisper from time to time, Godspeed. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue with the affirmation of our faith using the form of Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no command greater than these. And now I invite you to kneel or sit as uh, you are able. We will continue with the intercessions and thanksgiving. The form we are using today is found in the Book of Alternative Services on page 122. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory. For our private Linda, our Metropolitan Anne, 
our bishops Andrew and Priscilla, for our clergy Warren, honorary assistant Canon Gray, youth leader Dan, and that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of this holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. For the Church of St. James Aurelia, for the primates of the Anglican Church, and for the mission of the Church, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter Gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. For those on our prayer list, we remember especially Ron, Paul, Robin, Bobby, David, Richard, Barb, Susan, Joe, Polly, John, Shirley, Diana, Mark, Barry, Amy, Julie, Linda and Alan, Garth, Alan, Eleanor, Ken, Patty Ann, Nicole, Jackson, Patricia, Gwen, Grant, Andrew, Ross. We give thanks for the life, the witness, and service of Bill Witham. We pray for his wife, Beth, their children, Susan and Richard, and all who are grieving at this time. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us, Lord of glory. That by his power, wars and famine may cease through all the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the life of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened, let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. In our community, we pray for those working in hospitals, nursing homes, and palliative care, especially thinking of parishioners working in the healthcare system, Goldwyn and physiotherapist, Shai G and Zinda nurses, Donna and the PSW. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. As we begin to open up more services and businesses, may we remember our shared responsibility to help keep each other safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Would you please join in the call up to the day? Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven that he might rule over all things as Lord. Keep the church in the unity of spirit and in the bond of his peace, and bring the whole of creation to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A prayer from the Church of England prayer book for troubling times. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the God of peace enable us to do his will in every kind of goodness, work
working in us what pleases him through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always.